Good afternoon. My name is Esther Pryor and I am the vicar of St. John's Church in Egham, here with my companion Big Red Enoch for our daily Bible reading and prayers. Big Red has been on an epic journey discovering the Jesus story through the eyes of Luke, the reliable historian and gospel writer. If you'd like to catch up on any of our broadcasts, you can find them on our YouTube channel, St. John's Egham. We begin, as is our custom, with a prayer reminding us of Jesus' presence with us. A prayer that I have come to treasure. Let's pray. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your disciples, I am with you always. Be with me today as I offer myself to you. Hear my prayers for others and for myself and keep me in your care. Christ be with me, Christ within me, Christ behind me, Christ before me, Christ beside me, Christ to win me, Christ to comfort and restore me, Christ beneath me, Christ above me, Christ in quiet, Christ in danger, Christ in hearts of all that love me, Christ in mouth of friend and of stranger. Amen. Let's just take a moment to pause and ask the Holy Spirit to awaken our senses to the presence of Jesus with us. I don't know what sort of day you've had so far, but what a privilege to just pause in the middle of the day and remember that we don't have to do this thing called living on our own and in our own strength that Christ himself, by his spirit, is with us. He is the ever-present help in times of need. So Holy Spirit, would you come and awaken our senses to the wonderful presence of Jesus, our friend, our brother, our King, our Saviour. He is here. Amen. And so we come to our Bible reading and we are in Luke's Gospel, chapter 19, reading from verse 11. While they were listening to this, he went on to tell them a parable because he was near Jerusalem and the people thought that the kingdom of God was going to appear at once. He said, a man of noble birth went to a distant country to have himself appointed king and then to return. So he called 10 of his servants and gave them 10 miners. Put this money to work, he said until I come back. But his subjects hated him and sent a delegation after him to say, we don't want this man to be our king. He was made king, however, and returned home. Then he sent for the servants to whom he had given the money in order to find out what they had gained with it. The first one came and said, sir, your miner has earned 10 more. Well done, my good servant, his master replied. Because you have been trustworthy in a very small matter, take charge of 10 cities. The second main man came and said, your miner has made five more. His master answered, you take charge of five cities. Then another servant came and said, Sir, here's your miner. I've kept it 
laid it away in a piece of cloth. I was afraid of you because you're a hard man. You take out what you did not put in and you reap what you did not sow. His master replied, I will judge you by your own words, you wicked servant. You knew, did you, that I was a hard man, taking out what I did not put in and reaping what I did not sow? Why then didn't you put my money on deposit so that when I came back, I could have collected it with interest? Then he said to those standing by, take his miner away from him and give it to the one who has 10 miners. Sir, they said, he's already got 10. He replied, I tell you that to everyone who has, more will be given. But as for the one who has nothing, even what they, will, they have will be taken away. But those enemies of mine who did not want me to be king over them, bring them here and kill them in front of me. Quite a hard reading isn't it in some ways. I want to start today by making a declaration, if I can call it that. I am a Christian because I believe that God so loved the world that he gave his son. I believe that Jesus lived, that he died and that he rose again from the dead. More than that, I believe that he lives in me, with me, by his spirit, and I believe that he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe that on that day, I shall have very little to say in my own defense, and that it's Jesus' sacrifice on my behalf and his advocacy that will earn me eternal life with God. This wonderful news about how God chose to act on my behalf is what gets me up in the morning and gives me hope even at this time of despair. It has given my life a sense of purpose and it is the richest heritage I have to pass on to my children and it is a free gift there's nothing i can do to earn it jesus has done it all in my place on my behalf that is the bottom line and you need to hear everything that i'm going to say in that wider unchanging context there's nothing that i can do to earn salvation, to earn eternal life. I remember JFK uh, Kennedy reviving the American dream in a very moving speech that we still quote to this day. He said, ask not what your country can do for you. Ask what you can do for your country. In a sense, as we have seen through Luke, Jesus was reviving the kingdom dream for Israel. For the most part, people flocked to him asking what the kingdom could do for them. And as we find them now on the, on the edge of Jerusalem, most of them are there for what they can get. Jesus, with his face set towards Jerusalem and all that he was determined to do on our behalf, he turns the expectations of the crowd on their head. Come and follow me, but not, ask not what the kingdom can do for you. Ask what you can do for the kingdom. And what can you do? Well, you can persevere and you can invest. 
because Jesus was near Jerusalem, the, thought, the people thought that the kingdom of God was going to appear at once. And Jesus tells them a parable to tell them that things won't pan out as they expect. If you are familiar with the parable of the tenant, talents, uh, you probably know the Matthew version of it. That's a more popular one. And so it's important to pay attention to the different context that Luke paints here. For one thing, Luke's parable is not just about the servants. It includes a wider circle of citizens. One of the things that I love about Jesus and his storytelling is that he used everyday things and everyday events to teach people about God. And this story is no exception. It is a story that was found founded on something that had actually happened. After the death of King Herod the Great, his son had to go to Rome to have his claim to the throne ratified. And a delegation did go after him to tell the powers that be that they didn't want him as their king. And like the ruler in this story, he did return to rule. So the gist of the parable, which people would have heard in the context of what had just happened among them. The gist of the parable is that the king is away for a long time, long enough for his enemies to plot against him and for his servants to prove their loyalty. Likewise, our king will return, but only after an unspecified and lengthy period of time. And during that time, his enemies too might plot against him. And he expects us, his servants, to persevere in our labors for his kingdom, to invest in the kingdom movement, if you like. People sometimes will say how disappointed they are in God, how their faith is shaken because of injustice, cruelty, suffering, the pandemic or whatever. And I always think that to be fair to the Christian faith, the biblical faith, it doesn't promise the end of suffering now. In fact, the Bible seems to be teeming with warnings to prepare us for the opposite. And such warnings are certainly implied in this parable. It's not going to be cozy, is it? if there are citizens around wor working actively against Jesus and his kingdom. It's not going to be easy to wait for the king's return when we are not clear about when, we, when he will return. It's not easy, but we are called to persevere in our preparations for his return. So what can you do for the king and his kingdom? you can persevere and invest the gifts that he has given you. As Paul puts it in Galatians, let's not get tired of doing what is good. At just the right time, we will reap a harvest of blessing if we don't give up. Such an important reminder as we endure COVID reality this COVID world that we find ourselves in with its many faceted challenges. We don't quite know when it will end, but the kingdom purposes that God has gifted us for are still at hand and we are called to persevere and invest in the kingdom while we wait. Amen. One of the most precious resources we have to invest is the gift of prayer. And each day we pause to pray for our community. 
and today we are praying for schools as they reopen fully for the first time in five months. We pray for pupils, teachers, staff and parents. For the swirling of feelings, expectations, hopes and fears that are attending the reopening of schools. Let's take a moment to pray for each child, each teacher, staff member, as they work and learn and teach in what must feel like an unfamiliar environment with the new restrictions that they have to work within. Let's pray for each parent as they send their children to school. Some with great relief that homeschooling is over. Others fearful. Let's pray that the Lord would meet each person at their point of need. Lord, we pray for every pupil, teacher, staff and parent as schools reopen. Keep them safe, help them to learn, help them to grow. May our schools be safe places for children and for adults. Amen. And so we come to our final prayer, a prayer of surrender, saying, Lord, in the midst of the circumstances that I find myself in, things that take me by surprise, things that I can't control. I know that nothing takes you by surprise. I know that you are all powerful. And so I give you everything I have, everything I am. I surrender all to you. Lord, I'm giving you worship with all my life. I'm giving you obedience with all my power. I'm giving you praise with all my strength. I'm giving you honor with all my speech. I'm giving you love with all my heart. I'm giving you affection with all my sense. I'm giving you my being with all my mind. I'm giving you my soul, O most high and holy God. Praise to the Father, praise to the Son, praise to the Spirit, the three in one. Amen. Can I just say thank you so much for tuning in. It's a joy to be able to pause in the middle of the day to pray together in the presence of Jesus. I hope you can join us for the next installment tomorrow. For now, I'll say goodbye and may God bless you.